Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to another episode of The Cider Drinker. And what is probably going to be the last cider review that I'm going to put up before Christmas. So, uh, well, um, yeah, that's basically it. Unfortunately, I don't have any mulled ciders or Christmassy themed ciders this year, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you just can't get a hold of them. Anyway... Today's review, well, the last one I said was available from Marks and Spencers, but it was actually available from Waitrose. Well, this one most definitely is available from Marks and Spencer. Uh, so yeah, a little while ago, I just did a little bit of shopping there and had a look and saw what drinks were available. And uh, this one caught my eye because it is produced by the Kentish Pip Cider Company. Uh, I think I've showcased one of their ciders before in the past, I'm not sure. Um, this might be the first one that I've actually reviewed, but we shall find out. As I said, it's available um, exclusively uh, for Marks & Spencer, and it is their Bramley Apple and Pear Cider. Uh, comes in pretty plain 330ml can here, although to be fair, um, their own branded um, Beers and ciders all sort of look like this sort of um, plain writing and everything. But yeah, the Kentish Pip Cider Company are a pretty good company. They know how to make decent ciders. So, uh, you know, my hopes are a little bit high for this one. But this one is uh, a pretty average 4% ABV. And I can't for the life of me remember what I paid for this. I think it was something like £1.89, £1.99, something like that. Around about that ballpark price range anyway. Uh, so, yeah, pear and apple cider. And it contains conference pears, Bramley apples, water, sugar, yeast, and preservatives, E223, or sulfites. Um, so, yeah, this is the thing about supermarket-owned branded ciders. They tend to show the ingredients on the can, uh, which, you know, the whole thing about transparency in ciders is, uh, you know, if supermarket ciders can do it, then I'm pretty sure everyone can. Doesn't take a lot. So uh, yeah, conference pears and Bramley apples, quite common uh, fruits in the supermarkets, but ones that you generally don't normally find in a cider. Uh, I think I had one cider before which contained Bramley apples and it was it was all right, but we shall see. Uh, from Walton Farm, where the family have been growing fruit for four generations, this crisp and smooth cider combining conference pear and Bramley apple has been crafted. Taking inspiration from the land, it's that knowledge and understanding of fruit that we have built our approach to cider on. And apparently this is a perfect match with light blue cheese with parma ham, roast or grilled pork, fish and chips. Mmm, lovely. I don't like blue cheese and I haven't got any uh, pork, fish, chips or parma ham available, so just gonna have it by myself. Uh, it does say to um, serve chilled but not cold to appreciate all the flavours, so I've had this out of the fridge for a little while, but it is quite a cold day, so, you know, we'll see what I make of it. Let's get this can open. Now, as usual, you don't get anywhere near the amount of aromas off a can that you do on the bottle, so I'm just going to get this poured straight in, and, uh, yeah, just see what I, what I make of it. I'm not going to pour it in all the way so I can get my, uh, get my nose right in there, but, uh, yeah, there you go, pretty, pretty standard colour really for a supermarket cider, it's obviously been filtered through, um, lightly carbonated as you can see, and yeah, nice uh, light golden colour there, looks rather nice, nice appealing, uh, what does it smell like? Oh yeah, there you go, yeah definitely getting a, a definite cooking apple smell there. And then uh, just in the background, you're getting um, a little bit of a little bit of bitter pear aroma as well from uh, from those conference pears. Yeah, it smells quite fresh actually. It smells really nice. I don't know what uh, style this is supposed to be, but I would imagine it's um, going to be something like a, a medium medium taste to it. But well, only one way to find out, and that's to actually well taste this thing, isn't it? So cheers, everyone, and uh, yeah, here's to um, Marks and Spencer's Bramley Apple and Pear Cider uh, available in Marks and Spencer. So, cheers, Kentish Pip. A 
That's quite juicy, actually. Now, unfortunately, you can tell that sugar has been added into this cider uh, because it's got quite a thick texture behind it rather than just being full bodied. You can tell it's more thick, a little bit more syrupy on the taste. Mm. Yeah, you can definitely tell that that has been added into here. Uh, but you're getting nice, uh, sweet pear flavors from this. Uh, a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the uh, the cooking apple, Bramley apples on the uh, on the background as well. So the taste seemed to have swapped over from the aroma. The aroma was more predominantly apples rather than the rather than the pears, but it seems to have swapped over in the tastes. Not much of an aftertaste, I'm going to be honest. In fact, yeah, not much of an aftertaste at all. You are getting a little bit of uh, thickening up, um, just like coating the roof of your mouth, obviously from the like additional sugars in this. But hey, you know what? That doesn't taste too bad. A bit like the um, a bit like the cider that I reviewed. Um, well, just a couple of days ago, actually. This is uh, quite a nice, sessionable sort of cider here, really. Um, I said I can't remember exactly how much I paid for this cider, but it wasn't that bad. And yeah, can easily see people getting you know a few cans of this and definitely making a session of it because uh, it's got some nice, subtle, sweet aromas and flavours going on in there, uh, but nothing too overpowering, nothing too, you know, fancy about it, but yeah, for a supermarket cider, it sort of does its job well, so let's get a final taste before a final verdict. Yeah, I would imagine this is um, going to be a little bit too sweet for some people, uh, but for those, uh, those of you that don't mind a little bit of a sweet tooth, Especially if you're sort of coming off the back of um, all those cider pops that you can get in supermarkets and you want to try out an actual non-fruit infused cider, uh, this will definitely be a good step in the right direction. Uh, but I mean, obviously for diehard cider lovers, they're probably not going to try this to be fair. But for what it's setting out to do, it does it right. And yeah, there's nothing inherently wrong with it at all. So let me... um. Pull the rest of it out. There we go. And yeah, for a final verdict, Kentish Pips, Bramley, Apple and Pear Cider is getting a 6 out of 10. I do believe I gave that for the um for the one I the uh, the Orchard View that I did last time uh, from Waitrose. So although they were quite different in tastes, they do set out to not blow people's minds, but uh sort of introduce people into more what cider is supposed to taste like and especially with the combination of you know the apples and the pears there are some nice little um subtle flavors going on in here and then people might go oh okay i might uh, see what else is on offer so yeah well done uh, kentish pip and uh, yes good job marks and spencers and supermarkets like this are starting to you know showcase more what ciders are supposed to be like and sort of like educating the masses as to, um, you know, what it's supposed to be. But, with that said, that's another episode of the Cider Drink for you guys. And as I said, this is probably going to be the last one that's going up before Christmas. So, I really do hope all of you have a very Merry Christmas. And I will be back soon with another delicious and tasty cider soon. Well, obviously after old uh, Santa Claus has been. But, until then, I am going to cosy up with this lovely cider. And I will see you... Well, maybe after Christmas, maybe after the New Year. Who knows? Take care, guys. Till next time.